Gupta sir, you can start the webinar. Good evening, friends. I am KK Gupta, Director of Research in India, your host of this program today. Today is one of the best selection we have taken out on the request of our participants to understand the bridging funding, you can say gap, in respect of a funding for SME sector or SME, or SME, or you can say macro finance we are also talking about. Today we are a very eminent panel with us. I think doing a series of seven series of our Association of Financial Advisory of India, which is non-profit organizations registered under the Company Act 2013 on 30 September 21. AFAI promoted by the eminent financial expert and industry leader of India, who has joined hand together to establish a platform for exchange of knowledge and experience for the benefit and betterment of all stakeholders. I think this is the main object of these associations. Under this series, we are having this seventh webinar from January of this year. And under the Research in India banner, we have already conducted one of the 13 webinars. Very subject we have discussed, either you talk about the infrastructure or SME sector or a working capital requirement, all sector we have a touch in when insolvency. So this topic is very, very important. Looking into the topic, we have eminent speakers, although they are very busy in their professional life, I requested them that they should be present with webinars. I feel that this webinar we are going to be proved very useful for our members, for the stakeholders, for the entrepreneurs, even consultant or enterprises. We are with us, Dr. Narendra, former chairman and managing director in the University Bank. I will come later on. Dr. C. A. Chintamani Shah. He is efficient, long experience under the SME sector. He written so many books also. In this respect, we are going to interact with him also. We are having Sri Pramod Kumar, Bhattal, General Manager, Bank of India. He is looking after the SME sector. Very eminent person, very knowledgeable man. And Mr. CA, Mr. Hitender Shah, board member, of one cooperative bank of Ahmedabad. And he looking after so many things. I will come into details, their biodata, their profile, when I will talk to them. So greeting from this association to all my members. Macro and medium sized enterprises have become the backbone of the flourishing economy of India, along with growing entrepreneurships and employment opportunities. This sector cumulatively amounted of 30% of total GDP of the nations. MSC sector also enjoy 40% of the total workforce and have potential to contribute and help the nations becoming five trillion economy by 2025 as in we say our honorable prime ministers. The only support system of SME sector, demand can be fulfilled by the digital lending that allow easy credit access. MSE face a credit of change of nearly 1.1 trillion. I think this is a major gap between the demand and supply although bank has flushed with the funds, they can still there is a big wide gap under the scheme. When we are talking about 
there was 63.4 million enterprises providing employment to 111 millions and which are we are talked about the contribution to gdp and export we are not going to discuss all such thing because that is available at the internet or all the systems we are discussing here practical aspects why the gap is there what are the actions should be taken to bridge this gap when we are talking of the gap of 1.1 trillion and microfinance also play very important roles even registration under the act is very very negligible when we are talking about the entrepreneur of 33 63.4 million enterprises you see the registrations that is also important of concerns the bigger problem of the credit assess can only be solved by adopting an ecosystem approach that allow sma to gain financial trust and enhance their presence in the market emerging fintech i think this is the most important aspect here fintech company in india are working progressively toward providing the credit facilities based on three specific four fronts when we are talking about aspect whether you talk about the digital lending you talk about the data set of underwriter and core lending with the traditional banks and lender in the financial sector now this core lending is providing a very important tool in the hands of the banks and nbfc nbfc has some word fund crunch with them now bank is providing about 80% of the total requirement of the borrower and 20% being contributed by the nbfc i think this aspect is most important aspect to bridge the funding under the system fintech industry is equipped with advanced technology to remove the inefficient effectiveness of lending structure and promote credit assess many hazards the online lending platform has created a huge impact on the condition and growth of msme full fledged nbfc are leveraging data and automatic intelligence to underwrite loan application and enable lending to sme sector i think now nbfc will will going to play a very very important role the question is what is the mission of this webinar what we are talking about mission of this conference or you can say webinar is to highlight effective method to fill the funding gap of sme from the post pandemic effects also suggestion on how this method can be implemented for growth the webinar will discuss about the key areas effective solutions showcase the point of incorporated by the finance industry as a whole the session will be platform for the industry expert financial institutions consultant and experienced professional to share their experience and idea in this regard i will not take much time because we are having the eminent speaker with me i invite shri dr a chatanya shah mr shah is a chartered accountant come cost accountant with master in finance completed phd in 2016 in sme general financial management now you see the how is educated this man is senior vice president as a part of top management team he got exposure in various corporate issue from the management practice for the last 20 year plus he has been providing management and financial advisory support services to sme sector 
particularly to those who are on a growth path. The client includes the manufacturing, trading, as well as service to small and large turnover. I think he's the right person. We talk about SME sector. He is also author of book title What India SME Needs. It is published by IMC. The book has been sponsored by SBI and BSC SME Exchange and released in the hand of respected KV Kamath. You know the Mr. KV Kamath committee, also other things are there. So I think he is the right person to talk. I respect, I hand over this mic to Mr. Shah with a request to please highlight, give your thoughts. What is the major issue with regard to the growth of the SME sector? As we say, SME play very important role as you talk about the employment, export, GDP. And we want to know his thoughts. What are the major issues? Why we cannot bridge these funds? Why my microfinance or SME sector is striving for the funds? And what are the actions we should take so that our export, employment, other things can be increased? I hand over to Mr. Shah. Mr. Shah. Unmute, Kali, yes, sir. Unmute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is open. Thank you, Mr. Gupta, uh, for your kind uh, words and uh, inviting me to the session on uh, SMEs, financing, and fund based needs. Also, good evening, good evening to all the participants. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would uh, like to mention that as Mr. Gupta had mentioned, there is a huge gap between the funds available with the financiers and the demand from the uh, SMEs. Now, in this context, I would share my uh, thoughts and views and also some suggestions what is required to be done so as to address this issue. I would share my PPT. I hope everyone is able to view it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. My first observation, since as Gupta ji mentioned, I'm, my qualifications have been mentioned. I've been in this industry for 25 years. And I was also in large corporates for almost 20 years at a senior level. The first issue which I emphasize with the all my clients and the SMEs is this SME and MSME businesses, they don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. Their planning process in almost all the cases is virtually zero, all are at the back of the owner's mind. So this is the first thing which we need to understand. And in this context, I would be uh, you know, giving my presentation. The MSME business journey starts with idea, startup, tiny and macro, small scale, medium scale, and large scale. Now, if you compare it in terms of education and the cricketing uh, world, it could be compared with idea as a KG and build, building cricket. To large scale means we are talking of a postgraduate and international uh, cricket uh, at the uh, uh, international level, what the cricketers play. Now, this is where the skill development is something which is very important. And this gap is the major concern, whatever I'm dealing, dealing, you know, whenever I'm dealing with my client, this is something which I observe. Now, this is one of the most startling uh, fact about the MSME statistics. As Gupta ji mentioned, we have about 630 lakhs MSME units, and out of which, 99.94% are in the micro stage. 
Now, this is a startling fact, startling number. Besides this, two major issues. If you see the number of closures in the first year of its existence, third year and fifth year, we have a very large number. In the first year itself, almost 50% of the units closed down. Now, this gives the enormous impact which we have on the economy in terms of resource utilization and wastage of resources. This is something which we really need to look at and address as people, you know, as Guptaji said, those who are decision makers, we really need to address this issue. Government is really trying their best to work out, you know, how these issues can be resolved. Now, over last few years, I find starting with 1993, when the liberalization and globalization of economy took place, the entire business ecosystem is changing. We are moving towards competition, uncertainties and complexities, unprecedented, never seen in the business world earlier. There is a paradigm shift. Earlier in a license Raj, profit plus cost used to be the selling price. And that is how the profit bottom line was being managed. Now in a competitive environment, what has happened, we have gone, if somebody has to earn profit, he has to as a selling price minus cost. Now selling price under the current circumstances is under tremendous pressure and is determined by the market forces. There is no control over the selling price, which earlier used to be there in a control Raj, now which has changed. So the entrepreneurs and the businesses have to manage the cost. And this cost is something which requires managing this cost requires tremendous professional approach and systematic way of operating. This is something which the uh, MSME sector in particular has to learn. Banking, GST, technological changes, digitization, fintech, as uh, Taji said, compliances. This has been increased in the last few years tremendously. And as a result, there is a great amount of need for any unit to succeed of transparency and governance. Unless there is a transparency and governance, there is going to be a huge problem in terms of growth of any unit. And this, according to me, is one of the reasons why banks are flushed with funds. And on the other hand, they are not able to finance to the uh, MSME units because governance becomes a very big issue which needs to be addressed. If what is the long term business objective? The long term business objective of any entrepreneur in any economy is to create and build a long term sustainable business unit. Long term sustainable business unit. Now, this can be done with predominantly three things under control. These three things the entrepreneur must manage to build a long-term sustainable business. First is optimum utilization of resources. Optimum utilization of resources is something which I have been finding is a big challenge for not only MSME units, but in quite a lo lot of uh, cases, even in large scale companies. Unless the resources are utilized optimally, the required performance, this required sustainability on the long term is something which will be very difficult to uh, achieve. A case in example is railways. If we notice what has happened in, in recent years, as far as the railway is concerned, the utilization of tracks, utilization of compartments, utilization of energy, just increasing the number of compartments from 9, 12 to maybe 15, 20 is something which is adding to the capacity utilization. Same way, 
track utilization, which used to be around 53, 54% has gone to 66%. Speed of the train has also increased from maybe 80, 90 to 130, 140. Now, all this is similarly applicable even in terms of any business unit, whether it's a big business unit or a small business unit. One has to achieve optimum utilization of the resources. Second thing is that fair distribution to the stakeholders. My personal experience is that there is a lot which is desired in this direction. As a business house or as a business entrepreneur, if I have to survive, I have to ensure that all my stakeholders are happy. Besides the owner, it is the employees, my suppliers, my customers, government agencies, and society at large. All of them should be happy and they must feel that there is a fair distribution of the uh, resource of the uh, returns to each of them. If you notice, that is why multinational companies, companies like Infosys and Tata Group, they are commanding a huge premium as compared to the others in terms of recognition by the uh, investors. Third thing is compliances, corporate governance issues. Good governance today is the bottom line. And this is one area where there is a huge, huge gap. And unless that gap is filled or addressed, we will continue to have this kind of a situation for some time to come. And it has to be addressed. That's how the people will be able to survive. So in short, performance plus credibility is something which both things need to be addressed for as MSME units and the entrepreneurs to survive in the long term. Even if we notice the preamble of IBC, the IBC code says that NPAs, when one of the major uh, reason for bringing, bringing IBC code is to see that the so much of resources which have been lying idle under the cases and all that, they need to be brought to the books and those resources need to be utilized in a big way. And that is where the long-term sustainable businesses has to be created for the better uh, utilization of the economic resources and the various goals which the economy is having. Now, what happens? The finance function itself gets evolved. If you are at an idea stage or at a startup stage or in a micro unit, the unit is basically struggling for the compliances. Their focus is only on the compliances. As they grow forward, they start working on raising finance. How to raise the finance, whether it is from the personal sources or from the banking and other uh, sectors or go to the public. Uh, now even SME stock exchanges are very powerful in terms of generating funds and you know you can raise the money. And the third part, which is managing business, this is something where the finance function is lacking and is arrived at at the last. The finance function is addressing the managing business issue at the ultimate at the last stage. Now, this is where one needs to basically address this issue, how the finance function can be made much more effective so that the required business objective of creating a long term sustainable unit is taking place. Now, if one looks at the corporate finance function and management pyramid, this is what every company needs to do. Finance function operates at three levels. At the highest level with the management, whether it is board of directors or the CEO or the SME owner or an entrepreneur, they have to align finance with the strategic planning and control systems. Whatever is the long-term goal, three years or five years, the corporate strategy and the financial strategy, it has to align. Unless these two are aligned, both will be working in different directions. And at some stage, it will get 
uh, collapse and it will not work. At the middle level, integration with the operational budgets on a day-to-day -day basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, the operational aspect has to be fully integrated through the finance function. And this is what is required to be done. And this is where, again, my observation all along has been that MSME units, particularly when SME, small and medium enterprises, they have a huge, huge gap in this particular area. And the base for all this is the compilation of complete and accurate timely data. Again, I find that the reliable data from the MSME is a big, big issue. The credibilities are under question, and I'm sure my banker friends will agree on this issue that today reliable data is something which is a big question mark for all the MSME units and even in case of sometimes large units also. Unless the data is reliable, unless the uh, owner of a unit is, can be trusted, there is going to be this issue which will continue to remain. In the context of the changing economic scenario, what uh, Guptaji also mentioned about the fintech, which is taking place all along. What has happened, even in terms of finance and managing the business, earlier, the finance function used to contribute hardly 8 to 10% in the decision support system. Now with high-tech systems available, all the data required in terms of decision making, the finance has to provide 50% of its role in the decision support system so that the owner and the management can take a sound decision, which is something which is badly required. Now, my again experience is that in terms of understanding the data and the information, is all, there also is a huge gap in various SME units, maybe up to 50 crores or even 100 crores. Their focus on generating information for taking a right decision or creating a, a annual plan or profit planning and monitoring system, there is a huge gap which is required. This is one of the slide which uh, Dr. Narayan Murthy has mentioned in one of the comments, what are the essentials of uh, entrepreneurial success? The first is the ideas, the roads which are not traveled or less traveled. One should be able to articulate and understand it in a simple sentence. That is the concept of an idea of a business. Second, the market should be ready to accept. It should be scalable. Innovation scope should be there. Cost differentiation, quality, and delivery. These are the things which will help you to seize the market, whatever market you generate, new market, or take uh, you know, control of the existing market. Third very important is team. Complementary skills create trust, mutual respect, 13 contemporaries. He mentioned that when he started his journey around 91, uh, 1981, 82, there were 13, 13 other contemporaries, but everybody was left behind because they could not create a team which Narayan Murthy could create. Now, this is also applicable in terms of all the SME segment. Unfortunately, I have observed that the SME owner is not having sufficient management skill which will enable him to delegate and to create a team of complementary uh, skills which is required for running a business. This is a greatest issue which I try to address with most of the SME clients which I have. Last but not the least is the value system. One has to lead by example. Unless you have very strong value systems, you will reap what you sow. If you are not building a very strong value system in the organization, 
the whole thing will come back in a circle back to you. And the goal and the motto should be maximizing stakeholder value through trust, accountability, and fairness. This is what is something which is very, very important for any unit to grow. Now, this is my favorite slide. Growth journey and adaptability. MSME journey, if you see at the startup stage, virtually starts from a zero management skill. As they grow through micro, small scale, medium scale, and large scale, your journey, which will grow along with the business, is something has to match with your management skills. My strong observation is with various clients which I have dealt with, that most of them, they fail to build these skills. Every time he must be adaptable, he has to learn and pass on the uh, role to the next generation, to the next line. Now, unless he does this, he will keep on doing all the job. Most of the SME owners are so bad in their time management so poor in their delegation that they are not able to create an organization and unless they create all these objectives which i have talked so far it's very difficult if not impossible to achieve this is something which is very very important now i would just mention at the end you know the vision of the minister i think guptaji mentioned some of these uh, numbers sri gadkari you know the msme minister he in one of his speeches recently mentioned that he would like the share in GDP of MSME sector to go from 30 to 40 percent, share in exports to go from 48 to 60 percent, and the employment job creation need to go from 11 to 16 crores. All this is possible if the units are run in a very professional manner, diligently, with fairness to the stakeholders. And this is where the SME owner or MSME owner, his skill sets and his value system has to support it. The last punchline is MSME entrepreneurs don't need fish. They need to learn fishing. Unfortunately, what is happening is that all the professionals, they are trying to feed in with fish. He himself has to learn fishing. I would just give an example. Now, say, for example, we are talking as a uh, banking advisors and all that. Now, we are giving our best as an advisor. We are giving him the best menu of various products which are available. But when he himself doesn't know which product to select, where will we end up? He himself has to know, and this is where the shoe is pinching as far as the MSME owners are concerned. He doesn't know what exactly his requirement, what exactly his role is. And that is why whatever we people keep on doing, he is not able to appreciate our services or appreciate what exactly is being done. And this is the quote by one Mr. Michael Gerber. Uh, he's the uh, topmost uh, SME uh, management consultant in the world. Uh, he must be around 90 now, but he has created number of uh, units and number of success stories in the USA and all over the world. The entrepreneur is not really interested in doing, doing the work. He is interested in creating the way the company operates. In this regard, the entrepreneur is an inventor. He or she loves to invent, but does not love to manufacture or sell or distribute what he or she invents. And in this context, I recall Kishore Biani, the owner of Pentaloon's, uh, uh, Pentaloon's owner. He very clearly said that as a Owner, my job is only to create ideas. The CEO is there to implement it. 
This is something which is very, very important. With this, uh, I'll end my presentation and uh, we'll, I'll be ready to answer any questions in this regard if there are any. गुप्ता जी आप अनम्यूट करिए सर अनम्यूट करिए सॉरी सर सॉरी शाह सर आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू यू यू हैव गिवन ए न्यू व्यू टू अस यू रिक्वायर ए फिशिंग नॉट ए फिश आई थिंक दिस इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट व्हिच यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड यू आल्सो कोटेड द नारायण मूर्ति हु इज अ ग्रेट विजनरी यस टॉकिंग अबाउट द what you talk about the idea idea is the most important how to implement that is also an issue yes and market team team is also most important and you are also talking about the value system and you also told kishore gyani what is he mentioning you, you have to implement by the ceo you have to give an idea i think it is a guru mantra to our listener to our members what do you have informed to them sir i will come back to you there are so many things which we have to learn from you so now i am requesting our respected godfather the <laughs> dr m narendra former yes, chairman managing director indian overseas bank i think he is a very expert in all the fields He is retired from Indian Overseas Bank as chairman and sir, our introduction has been done, sir. No, sir, it has not been done. Okay, okay, okay. Currently, he is managing different role as a director and chairman member of the risk management audit committee and so on. A different organization, part of a different organization level, defining and implementing HR, financial training, development strategy, organization objectives. Establish value creations, working toward implementation of strict financial measures, and enhance long-term competitive of growth. Excellence in expanding knowledge and effectiveness of the people. More successful organization change and performance. Track record of delivering various lectures, and training on victim profession guest lecture in organization. achieve oriented professional excellent people management skill capability and managing change sir you have created the people you have created the vision you have created the professional people so i am thankful to you sir for accepting our invitation although you are quite busy still you are ready to bless us sir just i want to know yeah how cash flow lending and balance sheet lending contribute the bridge gap of a semi sector because i feel that traditional banking is going on when we are talking about the traditional banking that we are talking about the balance sheet if your balance sheet size is higher you get a higher limits although your money is stuck up in inventory receivable but your balance sheet size is higher But you have no cash flow. So now the concept is undergoing a change, sir. So what is your view, sir, for that? Whether this balance sheet lending or assets based lending should continue? Because the main object of SME sector is collateral, either in the shape of the current assets or current non-current assets or a properties. if the bank divert into a cash flow lending i think it can problem can be solved sir what are your view for that sir yeah you know thank you so at the outset i congratulate uh, kk gupta and of course resurgent india and association of financial advisors for uh, taking the initiative like you know your colleague mentioned more than 121 webinars and all are driven by kk gupta ji and i have seen quite a lot of bankers quite a lot of stakeholders have been brought under your uh, seminar uh, 
forum and uh, very what you call important uh, subjects so that is a really great and even the idea of association of financial advisors we have multiple that uh, financial advisors and in that respect uh, i think uh, there is a one uh, feeling that the iba also should take the lead in uh, registering some of these financial advisors uh, as an empaneled financial advisors and they also follow some type of what you call corporate governance and uh, that type of empaneled financial advisors i would be feel that the banker like pramod also would like to get uh, uh, what you call engaged in in getting the origination of uh, could uh, uh, no such msme or micro enterprises particularly now in the retail sector the idea of direct selling agent has uh, set in and uh, that has again resulted in uh, the retail lending uh, growing in a big way so that one uh, concept what you mentioned uh, that is in a very good and uh, i could uh, see that the chaitanya shah's uh, presentation is really a good in terms of uh, whatever uh, corporate governance or the all the management concept of management or stakeholder valuation or value proposition value creation but uh, it also requires the formal uh, to uh, informal to formal similarly it also requires from the proprietary uh, what you call uh, mindset to the corporate mindset or even to the uh, what you call the partnership mindset even the partnership model also needs quite a lot of uh, improvements thereof and uh, similarly it also needs quite a lot of capital so without the capital being there uh, these enterprises to invest on human resources or to invest in technological upgradation or to invest in uh, product innovation or the marketing support and also the integration of domestic market to the international market and to avail all the various schemes of the government which are not so much made uh, understandable to the prospective clients all are there in their sight but i am not sure how many of the our own managers or how many sme extension uh, service people or the government officials really work for that unless you work on the ground in terms of uh, making these schemes made available to the every such enterprise uh, it what happens that uh, only a few who are privileged will be availing the most of the subsidy and benefits so that's where the government also started that there should be a formal registration of all these micro enterprise and the or you call medium enterprises and uh, the response has been not up to the mark even though there were deadlines given all have not come without the formal registration they are not eligible for any of the government schemes so that means at a particular time both the government banks financial institution cdb or even maybe a partly nabard or such of the uh, overall uh, no ecosystem should make attempt to know more about the micro and ma- because some number is given always aapne bhi number diya but how far this number in relation to the real functioning is there and you said some of them are dying also so if the data of all these units in terms of uh, their uh, uh, last three years as well as likely the futuristic uh, their income profit or uh, bottom line in terms of the improvement capital and all that is available then uh, gupta ji kya bataye the that uh, there you could uh, work on uh, what you call ca- future cash flow based lending because it is ideal that uh, f- cash flow based lending will be self what you call uh, liquid li- it can be li- uh, it can be realized and there is uh, no difficulty and whatever gap in terms of the such cash flow after taking his uh, his capital margin Uh, that will be funded at the appropriate stage of uh, the growth journey and uh, suppose there are uh, any bulk orders are coming now you have estimated the cash flow on a particular uh, mode of uh, sales or a particular mode of profit but uh, there may be a bulk order coming or there may be 
some orders getting cancelled also. So in terms of that, there should be way for mid-level correction. And uh, that uh, I introduced one scheme in the uh, bank also that uh, whenever such bulk orders are received, uh, the bank should not go into again finding out the full part of the finance needs and all. You should be able to uh, against that order give a case specific uh, lending so that with the execution of that order, that extra lending gets uh, uh, finished or uh, extinguished. And uh, to that extent, you should also give certain leverage uh, to your field level functionaries. And there must be a, a delegation of lending in that to take care of, like no banks have got. Whenever there is an emergency need, 10% up to 25%, the limit could be made available at the zonal level, regional level, and even at the branch level. But even uh, in terms of uh, the scheme also, one more thing what we normally see this morning, I was talking to Guptaji also, that the entire scheme has to be very flexible. Now, uh, Pramoji ko malum hoga, suppose we are talking about uh, Ludhiana uh, cluster. Now, Ludhiana may, there will be a lot of uh, engineering export, there may be a lot of uh, garment export, there may be uh, other types of even industries there. Now, different cluster has got a different uh, perceptive in terms of inventory norms, different perceptive of uh, trade receivables, and different perceptive profit uh, margins, and there may be element of domestic sales or some of the branded items going for exports. Now, unless you make a cluster-related study and arrive at the cluster-based, uh, what you call specific uh, schemes, and I have found that whenever there is a schematic <laughs> lending, the lending becomes easier at the branch level. Now, if you say some guidelines relating to MSME lending, and without even giving uh, the such individual related, the sector wise also, so like, you know, IT sector, now we have merged the manufacturing and service sector in all together in the new definition. Now, are our client, our uh, <coughs> staff are competent to lend in the service sector? They may be competent to in lending in manufacturing. So what type of input in the uh, service sector uh, for lending we have given them to make them to know where are the, because in a service like uh, whether it is IT or uh, any doctor when he is doing the professional service of uh, uh, his, uh, uh, what you call medicine or other things, or even a like a small, uh, re uh, re uh, what you call retail shop, in you know, all that, if they are coming under the SME or small business, then naturally, there must be some flexibility available. And uh, even uh, banks should take up, uh, like, you know, the government has given a lot of incentive for cluster development. And they also finance such cluster development for under the public-private partnership mode. But I have not seen uh, our, any one of the bank has taken initiative in leading the such cluster, study, uh, what you call development. Now, when you do the ecosystem of the entire cluster, and have a first-hand information through your field officers, field uh, SME, uh, divisional managers, or, or such marketing experts, then to identify out of them who are uh, long-term sustainable and uh, also promote. One more thing, uh, sustainable, we should anyhow finance. I also suggest uh, our banker friends that there must be now a concept of consolidation also we should uh, encourage among the SMEs. Instead of having a large number of small, small micro units. Now, as uh, Mr. Chaitanya said that uh, you need a big, better corporate governance, better management, better accounting uh, principles, all that. Now, that cannot be expected unless they come into a particular uh, level of understanding amongst themselves. And they will have a common uh, facility uh, being spent towards the, these units together. Suppose we are talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, or robotics, or the new way of uh, uh, production where the human intervention will be less. And uh, even government should encourage that each cluster wise by promoting uh, again under the public private partnership and by involving the association, why not you create the digital uh, ecosystem which uh, for the micro enterprises or such a uh, medium enterprises in uh, facilitate in not only in the 
latest uh, production uh, process and process improvement or the your product uh, quality improvement as well as in uh, ensuring that uh, the innovation the what we are talking about innovation and uh, research uh, that is again government has allocated around 50000 crores for research and development in the last year budget but i do not uh, think that that has gone into terms of micro and small enterprise or medium enterprises in providing them such uh, what you call uh, uh, product which are quality based and uh, cost effective based and which has a large market in the international when we are talking about atmanirbhar and uh, supporting uh, uh, import uh, substitution by local uh, uh, product uh, there is a lot of money can go through the all these source in uh, taking our uh, heritage product or the rural uh, artisan i have uh, so many places no amara pramod must be knowing bank of india has adopted some of those clusters and other or means some uh, rural development uh, or what you call training skill developing meant there are a lot are under the lead bank there are so many schemes by which lead bank manager does some uh, thing and i have seen uh, one particular uh, tribal lady uh, having a manufacturing of a very beautiful uh, silk sarees at the rural uh, such places and uh, that you know if the cost may be 4000 it may be sold at 10000 by the local uh, the government association so that is a huge margin on the marketing part Uh, which uh, now unless each one of them will not be they will be selling at the distress so there is a, what i was telling that uh, coming to the point that asset based funding and the uh, what you call the uh, your uh, uh, the cash flow method funding a combination of that may be needed in a way because today if you want to raise liquidity or uh, long term uh, uh, funding for your uh, term loan or some such uh, infrastructure uh, assets in creating a ecosystem by a msme then he need asset based lending but if he has to have a certainty of his operation and the profit margin ebitda and all that then the bank uh, has to look at uh, cash based lending and uh, actually in a way uh, up to 2 crores under the credit guarantee scheme there is no necessity of making any collateral and even uh, other than covered also in the normal course banks uh, up to 10 lakhs no collateral so i have example somebody we gave under the prime minister's uh, employment uh, guarantee scheme in rajkot a 25000 loan long back uh, for uh, manufacturing no he went uh, some uh, abroad to germany or somewhere and saw some of the model of cnc machine and after coming here he developed the cnc machine technology everything and today he is enjoying maybe 550 crores of borrowing and his accounts have become global i have also found that one of the very important uh, uh, customer in bombay uh, bombay nay delhi he was given a order of facility but he was a very honest and uh, he was utilizing wherever needed the branch manager its power gave and when he really expanded that business which is a now a big brand everybody know it know it when he sold that he could get 2000 crores and made a, another further no investment in, in further creation of such uh, uh, supply chain management and other uh, nbfc and all that and he is utilizing the fund for creation of more entrepreneurs so wherever the bankers have like pramod in his own journey would have so many cases where a particular manager or particular uh, officer took the initiative some of them have come up to a very great level of success and uh, how do you handhold them how do you see that the information is kept uh, totally and i would also suggest uh, bankers to take the role of mentoring see now you cannot uh, forget the funding and keep uh, like you know okay uh, that you no know, more normally we see the stock and all arrive at drawing power bank record mein sabhi data hai but uh, in fact of uh, visiting and uh, dealing with them see i could uh, had a small my uh, journey in a place like goa every day after my whatever point of my service i used to means uh, say 5 o'clock bank closed but i would move in the market i would move with the, all the client in their office sit there and uh, understand what are their checks are likely to come what are the checks there are likely to go even if the contractors or uh, uh, timber business or some trader shop sit there understand 
and with that you would also get lot of check for your own business also and you would develop a relationship so we would come only maybe 9:30 10 o'clock home those were the days it is some 90 1981 not that i say manager should do or that but uh, we have a field officers also so how are you becoming a mentoring and there are cases of where those who played the role of mentoring those business have become successful see normally now msc will uh, hesitate to come to the bank when they are in difficulty and uh, it is a fact with the corporate also when they are in difficulty they don't give any proper data or information and all they inflate the data and take excess funding and when uh, with the excess funding they take further excess lending and when uh, one day they raise the hands they should have raised the hand when uh, five years back but they raise after five years now had the people are mentoring and we were in touch with them then naturally we will know the in and out of them and we ourselves will one enter to give them uh, need based funding very adequate funding one more thing is when with the banks are assessing the credit sometimes it's also happens okay what is my delegated power so the rural manager or some manager urban manager or whatever no under his power he come considers which actually is inadequate funding for him now when you do inadequate funding the entire operation gets again the difficulty so he hesitates to send it to his regional manager or division manager oh aur ek aur ek mahina ka delay hai bank ka delay in you know sometimes it takes now that is where what gupta is asking what is the mindset we should change the mindset is first mine our own data as much as data is available in the bank and uh, put all the data in the artificial intelligence or machine learning or whatever in technology and analyze the data and uh, put the as our earlier gupta ji said put your uh, transaction in the account also in that data link the gst data to that link the income tax data to that link other uh, like you know now when we later go for trades that is a trade receivable exchange where again uh, that all the data will be available how many bills and all that so that also now the other may be factoring or export again or his imports all this data when it is uh, put in the system and uh, then arrive at uh, digitally what can be the lending for him whether it is cash flow or whatever then i think uh, our decision making will be quicker all this based on data tomorrow if somebody questions also i can say i had all these data on that i have done now what is that uh, fintech and the nbfcs are doing they at our cost public sector bank cost or even the new generation bank at the cost of public sector bank they took share of all our customers and they had the data and some of the customer which are dealt with the bank of india say last 25 years he serviced them and came up to a particular level one time find a hdfc bank takes that account and our uh, we will not have any knowledge of that so in terms of that they know, and even i know another is we know how to enter into account but the banks don't know how to exit the account now in terms of the city bank or the foreign bank they know when i have to exit and where my exposure should be limited we immediately they come out and we have seen in so many consortium suddenly these foreign banks are already escaped whereas public sector bank being a these are all the national objectives which actually any of our government don't understand but we as a national objective we again handhold them even an export account has become bad we say okay 10% you keep in the bank as at whatever towards the old dues but the new dues you take money full for your production so it is again another way of uh, uh, so uh, to be uh, what you call short uh, gupta ji whether asset based lending or cash flows lending need to be totally on information and as you rightly said the co lending model or the collaboration approach in the fintech uh, and multiple uh, our own uh, digitalization like you know Uh, will help because i was told during covid uh, this you know of state bank of india they started lending all through the their uh, that te- technology uh, what you call uh, uh, through that you know so agriculture lending all that was done with that or the emergency credit guarantee scheme all lending was then there so you can uh, appraise and find out who are all eligible which i think bank of india also would have done send the pre sanction ask him to 
put upload or get the all the document through the help of the manager and uh, match all that and uh, release and uh, have a documentation also in the system and uh, this uh, entire so today when fintech which is small small unit could spend money for such a fintech banks with such a capital uh, we have money we can spend and uh, our uh, get that uh, what i mean to say collaboration approach but also keep our share of micro and finance credit intact and increase another thing you no know, rbi has come with the rule whatever incremental credit you are giving to such of the msm units which are not covered so far you are uh, eligible for exemption from crr and slr now this is another very good scheme now if uh, one point i am telling we have a prime minister janadan yojana 42 or what you call 42 lakh or 42 lakh, uh, lakh crores of account are uh, got from the bank now if we would have taken uh, some survey and uh, find out where are those uh, these people are engaged in any what type of activity either under the mudra scheme or under the agriculture scheme or under the non farm activity or under the traditional uh, cottage industries or micro enterprise if we fund them and each bank has such a data and that if you my uh, and through that system you give them small small input like you no know, today we give only 10000 vote draft facility that may not be sufficient yeah, and the government also should help the bank one more thing is actually i am saying all the government also don't have the full data with all that you no know, if uh, incomplete data and there is no much campaign by them unless they do the campaign to get all the data and everything and uh, the ministry and the banking uh, finance what you call banking ministry and the respective iba and the such of the government uh, banking related association and the reserve bank of india otherwise i have seen every time in any talk they are talking about the same certain percentage of uh, msme so much employment so much uh, contribution to gdp contribution to export i am not sure of that and if that was the case what did we do specially in making like you know today With above forty by days credit, uh, if there is a, what you call outstanding, it is a punishable. But uh, still, corporates are delaying. Second, uh, that uh, trades, you know, only up above five hundred crores have been brought under the trades. See, that is not suffice. Five hundred crores will be a medium size enterprise of the turnover. When you are a micro enterprise, you are a definition up to two fifty crores. You must uh, bring that trades to the lower level. and allow more enter, uh, more companies and the all the government even though they have been asked to come to the trades they are not come all so the volume is 40 41000 crores which is not suffice and another of course today all nbfc will be allowed to do factory now i think uh, pramod also in the bank of india also we should uh, start uh, such public sector bank on uh, work related factory because they are also that would be very you know because you will have a direct control on what you do land and how you will be either it can be discretionary or non discretionary or with the recourse or non recourse but particularly export which are guaranteed by the ecgc or even domestic credit if, uh, if it is a very reputed party and all bank should take up and uh, discount them and give them through the exchange and later no you can realize so this is another uh, way of uh, making formal credit so the informal credit the demand everything is known but the effort in the direction even though it is coming it has to be on a enhanced scale with this i think i have all other speakers also <laughs> later i will come but the i am very happy that the all the banking ecosystem is developing towards that and today corporate demand for credit will be lower and lower so the bank have to go for retail lending and msme lending and which is now is prevalent and they are only uh, positive growth and uh, it has to also have very experienced people one more thing no uh, because ye wahi head offs mein bula ke aur kidhar bhi training dene se matlab nahi hai unko aisa unit mein leke udhar ka study karke unka case study karke udhar hi udhar hi unhone solution dene ke liye unko such uh, msme ka cluster mein leke jane ka hai pramod ji wo bhi very important hai so yeah. aapko kuch acha suggestion diya so thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much what a sir a idea of jabdhan uh, scheme Actually, bank should study. Even the government should study. I think this is very source of data available with you, where you can pitch 
what is the macro finance or SME sector or a business sector? I think that data is available, but giving 10,000 overdraft facility will not suffice. I think uh, that is the best idea you have given to our entrepreneurs. And besides that, what you are talking about the cluster approach, you are talking about the cash, you can have a combination of the cash flow and the balance sheet budgeting. I think important aspect is mentor. The banker should act as a mentor. If bank is acting, sir, as a mentor, definitely these stress assets can be avoided. Because I was sometime with NIBM and study on the industrial sickness, the, how the industry becomes sick. So I also find if a branch manager is the main source where he can get the, where the account is going, because the operation in the account will somewhat, uh, you can say, minimize or no uh, transaction will be there, he will not submit a stock statement, other things are there. Sir, you are rightly covered. Uh, so, ek, ek uh, suggestion is mentoring me. Yes. Some of the last three sir, years yes, retired sir. best of the officers, sir, one they could point, be engaged also. One point just I'm asking you, sir, yeah. both NPA level, yeah. by September 21, declined to 6-9% against the 7.5% in March 21. Although it is envisaged that by September 22, the NPA may climb up to 8.1%. Besides that, the stress asset will be around 17% of that because 31st December was the cut of the last day of the restructuring of the loans. So, have you any views, sir, for that restructuring and date can be extended? Because uh, the uh, amount, whatever the restructure was done, whether it was based on the viability study or you are deferring the interest <coughs> to the view that economy will improve, something like that, sir. Uh, yeah. Have a view for that, sir? Sir, one thing is, uh, my very strong view is, uh, banks also should create a fund of around, say, 500 crores, each of the bank, uh, maybe with their and outside fund participation. And they must uh, also can have the tie-up with the SIRBI, wherein uh, uh, there is a scheme, instead of credit, you give a debt of seven years, and uh, in, it is in lieu of equity. And uh, the that CDB will give the refinance also. Now, this scheme, on that only the government came with another 20,000 crore scheme. So one my point before I answer your question is, okay, emergency credit guarantee scheme with that uh, three, crore, 3 lakh crore, then 1.50 lakh crores, and again another 50,000 crores, 5 lakh crores soon bank would have already three three and a half uh, lakh crores or nearly that they would have lent already uh, already and it has gone to all the sectors which are affected by covid now but you have seen anywhere with this NS credit even if you are given one year repayment holiday or two years repayment holiday another three years of repayment or four, maximum one year or so four years I said, karke maximum four se five years ka repayment diya. But tamara COVID ye team saal mein bhi COVID ye. To abhi COVID se MSME abhi dekhe entire international commodity price have gone up. And whether it is steel, metal, copper or uh, even oil, every price has gone up. And in that the entire cost structure, raw material, even another thing is for a cost structure will go up. Another important thing is Container cost has gone up. It is now $10,000 where something is there. Now it may go to $30,000 also with this uh, Russian war and all. So even exporter Kaliye demarage holding all that. So in all that costing having gone up, now his uh, profit margin also will be getting thinner and thinner. And he cannot pass on all the cost to the final consumer. And he is not having that uh, muscle. Just like a corporate has a muscle to pass on. Whereas by a micro, no, he has to depend on multi, multi, mighty corporates. So, unko to puchenge to whatever wo apka old cost mein, usme legao. And another thing is, so many corporates are enjoying the working capital through the help of MSME. MSME ko delay karke, they enjoy the credit and they don't pay, uh, incur any interest. And he is at the mercy. And all that are not getting into the formal mode of what is the transparency and all. So, then ultimately the MSME. So, aapka ye point hai abhi MSME ka uh, 
आई वॉज टोल्ड मे बी अराउंड नाइनटीन परसेंट तक का भी एन पी ए हो गया मेरा पीरियड में इट नॉट इज बी एंड सिक्स टू एट परसेंट टूडे इट हैज गॉन अप एंड लॉट ऑफ रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग मेरा तरफ से एक बार आप ये रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग करने से एक उनको कुछ एक कौन हु आर ऑल गोइंग टू सर्वाइव हु आर ऑल नॉट गोइंग टू सर्वाइव विच आर नॉट सर्वाइविंग आप डोंट रिस्ट्रक्चर और डोंट गिव दम क्रेडिट ओके थोड़ा एनी बिजनेस में विच आर गोइंग टू बी सक्सेसफुल सम आर फॉर एक्सिट ओनली आपने एक बार उसको पूरा एक्शन ले दिए और कुछ ना कुछ सेटलमेंट कराइए और कुछ ना कुछ उनका लिक्विडिटी कराइए एसेट को पर्सनल एसेट कंपनी एसेट बिकॉज कोई प्रोपराइटरशिप में कोई पर्सनल और गवर्नमेंट और उसका ऑफिशियल कोई एसेट पूरा एसेट उसका पर्सनल ही है वो पर्सनल करेगा और आपको तो इधर बाद में कोई एसेट मिलेगा नहीं तो एट द एट द अर्लीस्ट यू हैव टू एसेस ऑल यूर रिस्ट्रक्चर एसेट्स एंड फाइंड आउट वॉट आर द गोइंग चांस ऑफ दिस सर्वाइवल एंड वॉट आर हैविंग ए गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी that is where the government said for them i will be willing to give 20000 equity and also for some of them i am willing to give fund of 10 a fund of funds up to 50000 now i would have loved to give this entire uh, 3 lakh crore as a equity itself had they have given with the long term repayment no okay equity abhi denge aapka 7 saal 8 saal ke 10 saal ke baad aap equity ko mere liye इतना एवरेज कूपन में रिटर्न करो इक्विटी के लिए कूपन बिना तो भी ऐसे डेट हैड डेट बीन गिवन विद द गारंटी टू द व्हाट यू कॉल बैंक और एनीथिंग दिस यू नो यूनिट्स वुड हैव सरवाइव्ड बिकॉज़ आज क्या होता है उनका माइंड में ये एनएस डेट को भी सर्विस करना कैसा है और इतना तो प्रॉफिट नहीं है इतना बिजनेस भी नहीं इतना रॉ मटेरियल कॉस्ट हो गया एम्प्लॉयमेंट का भी कोई इफ द एम्प्लॉइज हैव लेफ्ट इफ दे हैव टू कम बैक टू द देन दिस मैन हैज टू इंसेंटिवाइज देम He has to provide them conveyances, giveaways, and all that, and provide some enough salary. Then only the expert, technical experts, and all know they don't come just like that. So, this will be paid for. So, your, Chaitanya, your, this is important. This is all about doing. But if the corporate is not doing, then the MSME will do. So, for this, 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 for Uh, when it is coming it was all now what you call uh, most of them they have cleared whereas the my, uh, micro and small enterprise mein kitna bhi credit ho wo dispersal credit hai uska to impact hamara capital mein aur hamara isme zyada nahi aata hai so they can always provide for that as against the incremental corporate credit not being major np coming they can manage that and it doesn't become a big problem for the bank and another thing is uh, i don't know pramod should say are we uh, encouraging such uh, debtors of msme to come for pre pack uh, what do you call insolvency resolution okay. mechanism because that is another scheme arrive at a very respectable and uh, adapt, acceptable uh, debt resolution mechanism just go uh, within 90 days to the nclt file that approve it within 30 days and uh, implement that now if there may be some drawing and other things what extent uh, the bank can uh, uh, no look into that and say there is no uh, any suspectable transaction and uh, they have dealt with them for the last 10 years so bankers are best and most of them are only one one bank lending there may not be multiple banking and all so i think uh, that is another area we should push such units for uh, resolution mechanism and other thing wherever uh, re uh, your resolution package within the our guidelines for this msme for incrementally can done that can also be done and other side uh, there must be simpler way of otc that is at what you call your uh, one time settlement okay. mechanism and some power should be given to the regional head aapko 50% aata hai to isko realize karo finish karo isko sabhi pakad ke pakad ke rakhne ka nahi to ek bar cleaning ho hove because banks have suffered higher cut so much in the bigger lending not that i am saying that we have to throw that money but if it's a honest customer we should be able to settle them also so that he can start fresh so aapka uh, gupta ji there may be thank you sir thank NPA you sir npa problem but that can be manageable I and banks are uh, quite capable uh, of managing that sir what you have mentioned with if a unit is viable definitely you can restructure otherwise you can say call of a day yes they, they should pay ots or something like that let the account should be finished Yes. Now, oh, sir, I will come back to you, sir. Now I am coming to Shri Pramod Kumar Ji, General Manager, Bank of India. He has done BE Mechanical, 
and has professional qualification of CAIIB and ACAMS. Recently, he has completed leadership development program for senior management of public sector bank conducted by IIM Bangalore. He started his career in Bank of India in the year 1999. After working in Bharat Earth Mover Limited, presently he is general manager heading SME verticals of the bank. He has nine years of experience of manufacturing sector and 22nd years uh, in banking sector. He worked in various domestic centers as technical officer, credit processing officer, relationship manager, branch head, general manager. He has been opportunity to head the overseas branch of the bank. He has experience of working at the project finance department of the bank. Early he was deputy as a managing director of Bank of India, Merchant Bankers Limited, during the period October 16 to April 19. Presently, he is heading a semi-vertical of the bank. I think he is the right person to talk about the trends. So the question is that when any receivable is there, so we want to discount the receivable. Now there is an exchange has come out where we can say this is a trend. Trade receivable discounting system has developed in the banking sector. I think it is picking up. Like in where you can go, a semi sector can go and discount uh, the bills at a lower rate, as a, this is auction for that. And uh, that is a without recourse. I think this is most beauty of this program is that uh, after discounting, after getting the money, they uh, SME will not be asked to reimburse it. It is without recourse. So request, sir, promote, sir. So please uh, give your thought on that scheme and how the banker are facing a problem. Whether this scheme is not picking up as it is desired by the government or Reserve Bank of India, sir. So promote, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. And... Uh... I am very happy to be on this panel, very eminent panel. I have worked under uh, Narendra sir. And, uh, very happy to be among him in this panel. So, I will definitely cover that uh, trades point. Uh, I will take little extra time and cover little other points because I feel that uh, this is a good opportunity to send my message to the uh, ultimate MSMEs because MSME advisors are there. So MSME advisors will be day in day out. They will be contacting and interacting with all the MSMEs. So I feel that this is the best opportunity given to me. I want to convey some certain other issues also other than trades also. So that uh, this message is passed on to financial advisor through them to all MSME customers. Uh, as in the introduction you told, uh, I'm an engineer. And I worked in uh, industry, uh, Bharat Atmos Limited, uh, for nine years before joining bank. And in that industry, I worked in gear shop, tool room, tool planning, a lot of other departments also I have worked. So why I am telling this is that I am very passionate about MSMEs. Because MSMEs, as we know the, uh, the data, that they support the country like anything, apart from agriculture, MSME is the one area wherein they support the country in employment generation. Aap sochi hai, 11 crore employees ko ko job data hai. Matlab, ek family mein char log rahe to, 44 crore people it takes care of. So, almost 30% of the people are surviving because of the MSMEs. So, adds up to you all, MSME entrepreneurs, you are doing a great job. And I am um, really... Uh, passionate about MSME because uh, because I am I am an engineer. I know what are the things you undergo, and I know what are the difficulties you face when you run the industries. So I am really passionate about MSMEs. So I want to touch uh, on the few points which are listed in today's topic. One such topic is that uh, how the role of a, a traditional lender should change. See, this is a very good uh, uh, point. When you see. When I was uh, uh, graduated from the college, I was naturally being an engineer would like to start an industry and start his own uh, uh, entrepreneur. But what happened that time, the situation was different. Now, there is no problem for taking loans from the banks. 
but that time the situation was different now the banks are after the the entrepreneurs to lend the money banks are flush with money we want to lend the money only issue is that we have to find the credit worthy borrower so it is up to you to make yourself credit worthy so that the bankers will come to you and lend you the money i'll tell you what are the things you miss uh, in uh, in this uh, area so as far as bank of india is concerned uh, we uh, we know that uh, if we have to survive this competitive market we have to be very competitive in uh, uh, timing and pricing our customers good customers especially are very sensitive nowadays for uh, timing and for pricing timing in the sense when they give proposal to us we have to give the quick decision quick sanction quick disbursement and in the pricing it should be very competitive pricing so to address these two issues what we have done from the bank of india see we have been working on these two issues we know that these are the two areas wherein we have to work hard and compete with the market so we are working on this issue how we are working on this issue is that we have opened sme processing centers which is called sme city centers these sme processing centers pan india we have got 91 processing centers this processing center will help us to take the decision fast and process the proposal fast and deliver uh, the results to you and disburse the loans to you fast not only sme city center process the proposal they act as a act as a advisor to the borrower the borrower if he has got any issues any suggestions you want from us these sme city centers are there to help you guys so if you want to take this sme city centers uh, uh, number you can you can go to the bank of india website wherein we have listed all the sme city centers numbers you can track the sme city center number and contact those people for so this is one sme city centers concept otherwise no for the technology purpose we have gone ahead and uh, implementing the e platform very uh, this e platform is because we have come very late in the market in the it we have come out with a very latest technology this is going to be uh, it, it is going to be a very good uh, very good solution for giving the faster uh, turnaround time what happens because we are using it the it enabled services also will be like due diligence kyc aadhar checking pan card checking all these things will be done automatically in in minutes and your uh, assessment will be done and it will be sanctioned your loan will be sanctioned very quickly so this platform is under implementation it will take some time to completely implement it in the first phase we want to go um, online live for a mudra loan shishu mudra loan which is for 50000 what happens is that if a 50 if a shishu mudra if a customer existing customer wants shishu loan of 50000 he can sit in the house and apply for this loan through our e platform get the loan disbursed to his account not even required to go to the bank that is to that extent our it is uh, we are making the sophistication in the it existing customers need not go to the branch to take the disbursement but for the new customers if they are coming and applying for shishu mudra loan the sanction will be given stp will be there up to sanction and they have to go to the branch and execute the document and uh, complete their process so these are the two areas wherein we are trying to improve our uh, tat as well as the pricing issues pricing we are very competitive in the market you may be knowing that recently we launched the welcome offer also to attract good customers of other bank to our bank we have given a very attractive rate of interest and the first time in the industry we have uh, linked this uh, pricing to this uh, civil msme rank if you have got a good civil msme rank if a customer has got good civil msme rank he can get a good rate of interest straight and uh, processing will be very fast this is uh, this comes under the welcome offer which we have launched in the month of august apart from this narendra sir was telling about the cluster i am very happy to say that whatever uh, initiative we has taken uh, during his tenure in the bank we have taken it forward presently we have got around 60 clusters pan india so what happens when we finance uh, when we have the clusters then our processing time reduces considerably and we offer concession to the borrowers and we can attract more number of people so 
people i i request all the customers and advisors to pass on this message about the developments in bank of india about our e platform about our sme city center uh, 91 sme city centers uh, available in pan, pan india and our, our and about our cluster based schemes you need to pass on this message to the uh, as a advisor you need to pass on this message to the sme uh, uh, sme entrepreneurs now coming to the uh, collateral free loan like sar told up to 10 lakhs we no bank asks any collateral up to 10 lakhs and about 10 lakhs up from 10 lakhs onwards to 2 crores cgtmc coverage is there through which you can take the loan very easily up to 2 crores no collateral is required gone are the days where bankers used to ask the collateral now it is not so we are all competing with each other we want to do good business only issue is that the borrower the entrepreneur has to improve his credit worthiness what is happening nowadays is that all the borrowers now they are very good in their area their area of manufacturing their area of service they are very good super they do wonderful work but when it comes to the balance sheet they don't know anything they depend on the uh, accountant they depend on the chartered accountants but my request to you all the if uh, sme entrepreneur is there or uh, advisors are there you please pass on this message to them that all the entrepreneurs should concentrate on their balance sheet also that is very very important point where these people are lagging they don't give importance to the accounts and finance whereby their balance sheets are not at all good what big challenge i am facing in ho uh, sme is that my my customers are very good customers they they do very good business they manufacture good products they are exporting but their balance sheet is not at all good so as a if you want to grow as a entrepreneur you have to take care of your product not only that you need to take care of the balance sheet also see simple 4 to 5 ratios are there you have to take care of that what is equity what is net worth what is tol by tnw what is debt equity ratio what is current ratio what is dscr all these small small things it is not a rocket science very easy anybody can learn only thing is that we need to focus attention towards that and ask your uh, accountant why my ratios are like this how i can improve this so if you take care of this thing your rating will improve and automatically your credit worthiness improve and one more request i want to make here is that see nowadays going forward we are we are now fast catching with the european markets wherein the entire credit process takes place on the credit bureau rating so going forward credit bureau rating is like janma kundali for all of us if you have the good credit, good credit rating good uh, civil rating you will get the uh, loan very easily rather we will come to you and give the loan only thing is that you need to take care of your civil for that what we have to do is that make payment very promptly don't think that it is a public sector bank chalta hai nbfc ko paisa de denge lekin public sector bank ko chalta hai ek mahina do mahina ke baad denge ye attitude nahi hona chahiye you have to pay your payments installments promptly your that will definitely improve your credit rating once your credit rating improves bankers will be after you to finance no need to go to the bank and not only that your credit rating improvement will uh, reduce your pricing because the, all the banks lend and price based on your credit rating if your if your credit rating is good your pricing will also be good it will improve your profit so please my request to you all is that take care of the balance sheet concentrate on the financials also and take care of the prompt repayment now coming to the uh, question about the sir uh, sir was discussing about the cash flow based lending and uh, uh, the balance sheet uh, asset based lending see this uh, cash flow based lending we were we are doing as of now all the banks are doing as of now like supply chain finance and um, uh, the G- uh, gst based finance it is already there but what changes are coming now is that fintechs are using this uh, area and they are financing for example logistic company is there they are financing uh, trip uh, based finance short term finance just unko ek trip jana hai ek trip pe trip ke liye kitna ye hota hai expenses hota hai wo finance karo aur pos uh, machine transaction based finance iska 
दुकान में पीओएस मशीन लगा हुआ है उसके ऊपर कितना ट्रांजैक्शन हो रहा है वो असेस करके इमीडिएटली उनको फाइनेंस करना है कैश फ्लो कैश फ्लो में क्या होता है यू नीड नॉट वरी बिकॉज दी यूर कैश फ्लो ऑफ पास्ट वन ईयर आईदर थ्रू जीएसटी आर थ्रू यूर बैंक स्टेटमेंट the system will analyze the fintech companies have the capability to analyze these things and give you the uh, credit very fast so cash flow lending mein do cheez hota hai ek cheez to hai aapko fast credit mil jayega aur aapko collateral ka requirement nahi hoga ye short term hoga bank ke liye bhi fayda hai kyunki ye short term hoga aur quick decision making ke liye acha hoga and this uh, as far as uh, cash flow lending is concerned even bank of india is going to come out with the automation in the gst uh, gst based financing and balance sheet financing also we are going to come shortly and all the banks will implement this thing and uh, we are definitely for micro lending we are all going to move towards the cash flow financing now coming to the uh, gaps that fintechs are filling mind boggling developments are being taken place in the fintechs sometimes we lose our sleep Uh, the way they are uh, making progress the way they are developing their uh, capability uh, it is really mind boggling we are we don't want to lag behind we are trying up with the uh, many fintech companies wherein through fintech companies we want to source the business and once our e platform is ready the sourcing will be uh, taken care by the fintechs and uh, the processing will be taken care by the our e platforms now i want to touch a little bit on the co lending also like uh, gupta ji was telling about the co lending co lending uh, originally it was called co origination it had some uh, problems it could not take off the later on rbi came out with a revised version of co origination co lending co lending has a two has got a two different options uh, option 1 and option 2 nbfc fellow will understand easily option 1 is that we will we will have the agreement with the nbfc and whatever uh, falls within the our policies we will sanction at the same time both nbfc and bank will sanctions at the same time this is option 1 in the option 2 what happens first nbfc will sanction in a weeks time they will give the files to the bank and bank will see and they will decide out of these 10 files or 50 files which one they have to take and which one they, they should not take in the in the option 2 banks have the discretion to say no to some files whereas in option 1 it is all uh, in the policy level only it is agreed we have to take all the proposals which is fitting into the policy these are the broad uh, differences between co lending i am happy to say that we are bank of india has uh, tied up with the two nbfcs already one is uh, amdavad amdavad based nbfc called mass finance uh, uh, listed company and another one is uh, hyderabad based ikf who are into vehicle finance mass they have already started lending ik finance shortly we are going to start lending and we are looking at a lot of other players also in co lending shortly we are going to do good business under co lending co lending mein kya fayda kya hai bank ke liye fayda ye hai ki hamara reach badh jayega kyunki aaj ke din mein nbfcs ko kone kone mein wo log nbfcs ka representative rehta hai unka office bhi rehta hai uski wajah se is co lending arrangement mein bank will get a benefit of reach going to the grassroots level and uh, meeting the people and we will be adopting the policy and the product of the nbfc so isme hamara jo jo traditional product ka terms and condition hota hai wo side mein rakh ke hum log nbfc ka terms and condition adopt karke unke style mein lending karne ke liye koshish karte hain isme ek bank ka fayda hai as i told we have the reach we will get the reach to the people when whereas the nbfcs will get the advantage of the low cost fund from the banks so in this arrangement 20% is minimum 20% should be held by the nbfcs 80% should be maximum 80% can be held by the uh, banks so this is going to change the scenario uh, here uh, what is the problem banks are facing is that presently uh, not many fintech or uh, software are available in this uh, co lending area we are uh, having some issues as far as the implementing the rbi guidelines are concerned we are all working even bank of india is working so once that is through uh it will be very quick and uh, fast lending to the micro uh, segment um uh, now coming to the uh, trades point of view say like uh, gupta ji told that yeah trades was a very good initiative 
and you will be very happy to know that as on date 2600 corporates are listed there 2600 buyers corporates are listed on the trades and 30000 around 30000 sme sellers are registered in the uh, this thing very very good initiative but when i go and meet the uh, customers when i go and meet the uh, we have the concept of outreach programs much before uh, government started this outreach program we, we started this outreach program concept last 5 years back only wherein we we call all the msme borrowers and the prospective borrowers also at one group uh, we conduct the meeting and we'll try to tell them about the uh, various schemes bank is uh, taking various schemes they can use it during those schemes i try to ask this question see i ask this question that how many people know about the trades it is surprising to see that very few people know about the trades it is here the financial advisor role comes into picture you have to ensure that this message reaches to the all msme borrowers and msme borrowers should insist that their buyer should get registered on the trades and they should also get registered on the trades you here in the situation wherein your uh, invoice aap upload karo bankers aapke invoice ke finance karne ke liye bid karenge means bid aisa karenge ki itna price kin kon uh, jo kam deta hai price usko wo oh, finance ka option milega so very good concept Uh, but it is not picked up uh, as expected slowly it will pick up uh, here the financial advisor role is very much is there please take this concept to the all the uh, smes here very i am very happy to say presently three platforms are working in trades in all the three platforms bank of india is number 1 okay. so we have financed as on date 1350 crores under trades out of total uh, all banks put together are financed 11000 crores that amounts to 12% is entirely contributed from bank of india i am very proud of that we are number one in trade platform in all the three uh, areas very nice while concluding my speech uh, a few advices i would like to give to my uh, entrepreneurs or advisors who can take it this message to entrepreneurs basically during my experience i find uh, these are the common mistakes entrepreneur does what he does like uh, our uh, chetanya sir told he told that uh, you know capable he used a very good word fail to plan fail to plan exactly that is one mistake they do what happens they will be very good uh, they are very good in manufacturing they will be concentrating on business suddenly they get a big order they get excited they don't see are my term loan ke liye apply karna term loan sanction hona see bank all said and done bank ke liye aap proper planning pehla pehla karna chahiye aapko machine lagana ho to बिल्डिंग एडिशनल बनाना हो तो पहले प्लान करके आप पहले पेपर्स देना चाहिए इफ यू डोंट प्लान व्हाट मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द बॉरवर्स विल डू इज दैट दे यूज देयर वर्किंग कैपिटल टू प्रोपियर द मशीनरी नेवर यूज योर शॉर्ट टर्म रिसोर्सेस टू क्रिएट द लॉन्ग टर्म एसेट्स दिस इज द बिगेस्ट मिस्टेक डन बाय द मेनी ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज एंड मेनी ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज हैव गॉन टू डिफिकल्टीज बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस वन सिंगल मिस्टेक सो माय Uh, request to the ad- all advisors take this point noted and tell all your msme that never buy your uh, fixed assets through the working capital this is the first thing second short uh, shortage of time is there still I, w- i would like to cover one or two points second point i want to cover is that see usually we have to spread the risk we need to have the good customer base as well as the good supplier base also we should never depend on the one customer one single customer or one single supplier we need to see that amara ek customer se business 20% se jyada nahi hona chahiye aapka 20% se jyada business ek hi customer ke upar hai so you have the concentration risk tomorrow that guy will take you on right so please broad base your customers and also broad base your suppliers because broad basing the supplier will save you from the shortages of the raw material this is the second thing i wanted to tell you then uh, usually kya hota hai customer i see many customers whoever is getting the government orders now they keep on doing the only government orders always it is good to get the government orders you will get your money but there is a chances of delay you need to plan in the beginning only you are getting government order take government order do that work but you should have the capability to withstand your working capital in case of there is delay in repayment also take the government order simultaneously establish the private order also don't depend on one single source either government or a private 
you need to broad base your customer uh, uh, customer base uh, i think that most of the things i wanted to cover i have covered yeah uh, one more thing i want to tell that uh, so one of the speakers were telling sir narendra sir was telling see we have gone to the extent of uh, what we have done recently off late our current account customers whoever is having the current account with us and operating the current account properly good amount of balance is there in the account and good credit rating is there such customers we are sending a pre approved uh, uh, pre approved sanction letters to them they can avail that facility when the message comes to you that this pre approved loan is there based on your transaction in your current account you can avail that such facility such initiative also we have taken lot of new initiatives have been taken by bank of india uh, i cannot cover all those things today thank you very much for uh, gupta ji for uh, thank you sir uh, thank you very uh, much sir uh, all participants sir our participant appreciating you giving a practical in depth of your bank what you talk you. about the sme processing center your bank has introduced where yeah. you have expert at the proposals e platform i think this is most important respect to you have touch welcome offer what you are talking about cluster approach and what you are talking about 20% business should be one customer should be there not more than that i think uh, what you have suggested a short term fund should not convert into long term uses i think uh, these are the practical things sir what you have told so only one point is there about the factoring so when we are talking about the discounting of the bills to this exchange so how the factoring is also useful for the bill discounting sir because that is also with recourse or without recourse also one of the uh, our participant is asking whether you can say something about factoring sir see see our trades is without recourse Yes. See, all the all the trades. Whenever MSME MSME gives the uh, invoice, there uploads the invoice there. Whenever it is financed, he is done away with that invoice. The right. Sir. Whatever whatever risk is there, bank has taken a risk and yes. he has to he has the recourse only to the buyer. Very nice. So Very nice. he will get it. It and is without recourse. No, it, it is it is without see, recourse. Yeah, yes. I, I I feel that I, I recently I have seen a presentation from one uh, fintech company. It is a it is a really it has come out very nicely uh, with the invoice financing model uh, they are doing very fantastic work i have, i am not able to remember uh, immediately i will pass on this message to gupta this particular website is giving uh, anybody can uh, anybody can log in and um, uh, upload their uh, invoice and it will be financed by the uh, peer uh, this thing. and I, i would like here i would like to say about the peer to peer lending you may be knowing that uh, Uh, what are the challenges banks are facing is that the peer to peer lending is also there so, where in uh, the um, uh, the common public are the lenders and the entrepreneur is the uh, the loan taker so this is also picking up in india a uh, lot of good things are uh, being happening lot of challenging time for the bankers like us uh, of course we have confidence that we'll do well and uh, just i want to take one minute in telling the Two uh, two difference of private and public sector banks. You, I ask this question in the outreach programs when I address the customers. That uh, did you see anybody any private sector bank financing the new entity? Absolutely, pin drop silence will be there because private sector bank don't finance new entities. It is only public sector banks. We take risk. We know to we want to develop the economy of the country. we know that we have to support the entrepreneur and the young graduates coming out of the college we finance them and they will be with us for 3 to 4 years that is the very difficult period that is the risky period that is a challenging period but unfortunately after 3 4 years they become very price sensitive and private sector banks captures them and takes away so we need to tell our advisor should tell that like narendra sir told that in case of difficulty it is the public sector bank which help them like we have helped in giving the gcl we called borrower we called borrowers so we go to so we logo ko phone karke branch ko bula ke gcl disperse kiye hum log kareeb kareeb 8000 crore tak gcl disperse kiye resection bhi bige wherever ya yeah, sir told wherever it is a viable units are there good credit history is there good repayment track record is there such people we have called and we have restructured the account so when you are in difficulty 
we are there. So please bank with public sector banks. Sir, one question is there for Nirav Vyas. You are only operating under the hybrid scheme without collector security are not taken up. I think uh, this is a point what you are saying. I think it's, it is not possible. CG, TSM. Sir, uh, this is Ben inquired for a proposal under CGT MSC with SME city center. We are informed that Bank of India only operate under Hayward scheme. That is without collateral proposal are not taken up. No, I think there is some hybrid, uh, hybrid scheme. Hybrid scheme. Yes. Hybrid scheme is the uh, scheme promoted by CGTMSE itself, Sorry. wherein promoter wants to give a part of a uh, collateral and part of it is covered in the CGTMSE. Yes. And uh, what I would like to say is that let them contact our SME city center in case they have problem. Let them call our HO. We are definitely going to help them. Very nice, very nice. I also feel like that. I think the question is not very clear because uh, without collector security, there. Sir, if uh, anything you can tell, can bank and financial institution play a role uh, to provide some incentive industry adoption in manufacturing supply chain? Supply chain may bank is financing, sir, under the supply chain, no? No, so supply chain may bank finance karta hai, am lo both din se kar rahe hai, yes, both din se kar rahe hai. There also, we are upgrading our software and we are going to tie up with the, we are already tie up with Tata Motor, Tata Motor dealer financing we are doing oh, and Steel Authority of India Limited ka dealer financing we are doing sir. and uh, we are going to increase this uh, scope. Once our uh, software is updated, it, it takes one month time. Uh, if anybody is interested in supply chain financing, please give my uh, email ID to them, let them write to us, we will get in touch with them. Then another question, uh, SME are uh, highly uh, unorganized. How to incentive them to adopt digitalizations? Most uh, of them uh, do not have a become a digital. Yes, sir. Please, please, sir. That is called channel financing. Sir. Uh, that under the cash management. Sir. Public sector bank, including long, long bank, corporation bank, sir. whatever their check no, or anything is there. Suppose the bill is raised sir. immediately to technology. Maruti Udyog has sent the bill to any dealer. Now, sir. the dealer could be immediately financed. Now, the dealer per se, we can also take a limit for dealer and the, with the dealer, we can finance the individual customer. So, it is all te totally technological oriented. Yes, now, sir. I think if the Bank of India has come also, that is a very good way of financing yes. and uh, you will also have self-liquidating because you will be getting into the overall. Uh, right. So, you have a original equipment manufacturer, the dealer and the ultimate customer. So that uh, chain through the technology and you will be managing their uh, entire uh, debt uh, accounting also. Bank can give the entire data to the, that, you know, that, uh, what you call the dealer, that uh, the, which are the, all the customer you have the receivable pending and uh, how are that being uh, managed. So he need not have even accountant in this. That way technology and the foreign banks uh, like Standard Chartered Bank, Citibank, all of them have gone much ahead in that uh, cash management uh, financing. So I think uh, they have taken a very initiative. Uh, we, of course, Pramod will answer. That is now under the technology upgradation scheme of the government of India, there uh, for implementing uh, digitalization, as well as he asked one, you know, that uh, for uh, going for four level of that production, Sir. manufacturing four, Sir. there is a scheme. And uh, quite a lot of that only I was saying, most I, of the like, you know, uh, either yeah. uh, uh, big uh, exporters of cotton or whatever, what you call uh, garment exporters, they take and yearly they get that uh, technological upgradation scheme, whether through machinery technology upgradation or in the digitalization of the entire uh, manufacturing, there is a scheme and uh, bank in turn uh, give them uh, credit. Am I right, Pramod? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, yes, sir, you have replied for the digitalization scheme. Now, what another question is the interest rate and EMI are large resistance for SME. Can blockchain bridge the gap for mass adoptions? Very possible, sir. Blockchain may be a rate of interest change. 
तो आई थिंक इट इज अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट टॉप टॉप चेन ब्लॉकचेन की वजह से रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट नहीं नहीं रिड्यूस ब्लॉकचेन वजह से ये हो सकता है कि ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी यूज करके और कन्वीनियंसली लेके आ सकते हैं यस सर सी दैट्स व्हाट फ्यूचर इज गोइंग टू बी दैट बट अ लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च इज बीइंग डन ऑन द ब्लॉकचेन इट विल बी यूज्ड इट विल बी यूज्ड इन फ्यूचर जो एलसी एलसीस हो इनवॉइस डिस्काउंटिंग हो एलसी का यूज हो ऑल दोस थिंग्स कैन बी डन इन फ्यूचर यस सर प्रमोद एक स्कीम ला सकते हैं सपोज एनी ऑफ आवर फाइनेंस कस्टमर्स आर गोइंग फॉर latest technological upgradation including digitalization or artificial intelligence machine learning robotics and all uh, and if they are rated uh, in the your according to civil why not you give us some reduction in the rate of interest so as to promote uh, more such customers to adopt because that will enable you also get online information quickly so the bank can uh, say we can encourage them okay you are my customer yes, last 5 years i have come forward that i know that for your research in your uh, product development in your uh, other uh, uh, what do you call easy or efficient management you need uh, digitalization you also need uh, total technology in terms of your product quality if you come with any scheme for that i will give you term loan is a such a rate of interest aap kar sakte hai na very very good actually, idea sir very good uh, actually we have the we have the scheme for erp suppose uh, the uh, company uh, ERP. was uh, small msmes are going for erp implementation all those thing scheme is there and whenever uh, problem i am facing uh, in msme vertical is that uh, they don't concentrate on the balance sheet sir their balance sheet will be so weak uh, and uh, automatically unka rating 1 uh, uh, to 10 one is the best most of the guys will be around 5 6 only so it makes very difficult for a banker to finance uh, such a, a borrower and offer the collateral uh, uh, offer the best rating to them best rate to them so they have concentrated on the balance sheet also thoda bahut equity dar lana hai report improve karna hai ye ye rating our internal rating or external rating both internal and external both what i am telling in our internal rating at the very high level not at the lower level by looking it to their uh, fast record they are efficient of operation repayment and keeping the compliance or what you call payment in time and all some higher weightage can be given even management technique even though he is less of capital and his balance sheet is not good and you can also say not more than so much percentage of drawing if he has higher drawing rating will suffer thoda kuch usme objectivity laaye to then your internal rating can also improve thoda study karne ka hai wo hamara that that our, our risk management department is now working on the internal yes. rating uh, they are working yes. on it sir yeah correct because <laughs> thoda kuch flexibility depending on the our uh, relationship for the so many years of his uh, good uh, transactional level uh, efficiency we must uh, change that but there with the parameters matrix karne ka so what of the attended two years before sir, covid attended also put uh, what you are narendra uh, sir you are mentioning blockchain can bring trust and transparency what you are also yeah. to yes. reduce the risk and offer low rate of interest what you also taken up and one of attendant is also telling only one question left sir that i will take only one minute can revenue equity based financing be a potential idea for sme sector pardon can revenue that mean what are you are talking about the cash budgeting system equity based financing be a potential idea for the sme sector same so the thing question is uh, revenue based revenue based is, uh, is a cash flow statement she cash flow uh, you can ask him and the equity based is a balance sheet based sector i i would like to say one more thing uh, if i have if i have given one more minute time i'll tell you no no you are sir you are all minutes are there uh, because we are uh, almost 6 o'clock now and then uh, no, i will what take i want to tell Sir. why why i am harping on the concentrating on their uh, finance is that they should uh, they should feel that ye ye log the entrepreneurs jo micro hai small hai un logon ka ye way hona chahiye ki mai properly grow ho ke kal ke din mai nsc msme portal mein list karunga wo right. ambitious leke chalna hai jab wo ambitious leke aap chalenge aap us saal ka profit ke bare mein chinta nahi karna chahiye 
प्रॉफिट को रिटर्न करना है प्रॉफिट को विद्रॉ नहीं करना चाहिए प्रॉफिट को रिटर्न करना चाहिए सो दट इयर आफ्टर इयर योर बैलेंस शीट विल इंप्रूव टुमारो एंड एट द सेम टाइम लाइक आवर चेतना साहब टोल्ड गवर्नेंस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोई कोई हिड ये नहीं होना चाहिए डॉक्टर ये बैंकर और कस्टमर का रिलेशनशिप कैसा होना चाहिए इट शुड बी लाइक डॉक्टर एंड पेशेंट रिलेशनशिप यू नीड टू बी वेरी फ्रैंक एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द डॉक्टर देन ओनली डॉक्टर विल गिव यू राइट मेडिसिन <laughs> if you don't tell your financial problems to the banker banker will not be in a position to give proper solution to you you need right. to be very frank go go to the uh, your uh, banker and you tell your problems you will definitely give a good solution so always be transparent and uh, uh, you are uh, please understand one thing the people who do service like uh, like me after after my retirement i cannot give my job to my son you are right <laughs> but 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 you are creating an asset wherein your son will have advantage of uh, ta- taking it to one grade one level above aapko asset create very very itna mehnat aap karte hain we are creating the generation but we cannot do it as a service man you cannot exactly. do it exactly uh, so it is a, it is a gift you are giving to next generation right. make that gift uh, worthwhile uh, keep keep it uh, keep the enterprise in a good uh, situation good uh, as far as the financial health is concerned so that your son will uh, take to uh, next higher level next higher you are right sir you are right you can progress like anything sir i think uh, professor everybody appreciating your practical views what you have given to them and everybody are selling promote the health on a very excellent job lastly what i am asking you you already given a suggestion to the our listener all the entrepreneur any last advice you want to give sir promote sir to our entrepreneurs you already given this suggestion anything you know yeah, i already about. given see basically if anything uh, you want from the end nowadays nowadays bankers are fighting literally fighting with each other to finance the good borrower sir aap kabhi bhi mai mere colleagues ko yahi bolta hu bas don't think in your shoe think about your customer imagine yourself as the msme borrower and imagine is the is problems kitna wo wait karta hoga kitna problem face karta hoga din bhar hazar problem rehta hai unka so we need to imagine the uh, situation in the uh, going to their shoes and imagine then only you will realize that uh, uh, kya problems hota hai similar way i want that msb entrepreneur should also come into the shoes of the banker and imagine That why always they tell that अरे bank loan नहीं देता bank loan नहीं दिया तो हम लोग बेटे किसके लिए हम लोग loan क्यों नहीं दे रहे because you are not made yourself a credit worth you have to make yourself credit worth that is in your hand only take care of your repayments take care of your balance sheet take care of your civil ratings and all those things then naturally people will be behind you to finance and that is my advice to them very nicely very nicely sir you have told uh... So now I'm coming to our respected Narendra sir. Sir, last uh, advice uh, from your side to our entrepreneur sir. Nay, <coughs> my one uh, suggestion to any MSME is that uh, when you are doing good, sometimes no very acha din rata hai. बहुत सारा कमाई करेंगे, बहुत सारा profit करेंगे, सभी करेंगे. आपका घर का मामला और business मामला को थोड़ा अलग ही रखने का. सभी घर के लिए और सभी बच्चों के लिए और कुछ शादी के लिए ये के लिए ऐसा इससे ड्रॉ किया तो अभी पहले बोला दिस इज ए एंड्यूरिंग बिजनेस इसको आपने कितना ऐसा निकाला इससे आपका आगे जाने में तकलीफ आएगा दैट वे बिकॉज इन द मार्केट ऑल्सो सो मेनी विल बी सी ओके यू आर स्पेंडिंग एवरीथिंग बट वेन इट रियली कम्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ सम बिजनेस प्रपोजल यू आर नॉट एबल टू Uh, bid it very competitively, whether domestic or global, you will suffer. For which you need the assistance of capital. So, as much corporatizing your uh, balance sheet, improving your uh, uh, what you call uh, equity, and reducing the debt equity, and keeping a provision of capital for the modern uh, technology expansion and other things. I think uh, with the more transparency and. Uh, in the limited way i don't say big governance limited way when you adapt and also one more thing uh, your company will uh, prosper second i say that make your employees also owners of the company at least ek teen char 
पांच छह ना कोर आपका स्टाफ है टेक्निकल मार्केटिंग प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट उनको भी थोड़ा आपका कंपनी का इक्विटी वेदर फॉर्मल और इनफॉर्मल वट आप थोड़ा दे दिए सो दैट लाइक नो वेन यूर यू आर फ्यूचरिस्टिकली वैल्यू क्रिएशन दे विल ऑल्सो गेट otherwise to retain them of those people also will become so these are the two things and for uh, pramod the these satisfied customers should canvas 10 customers for bank of india yeah. <laughs> and our bank of india with, because i am also bank of india person so they will separately because bank of india has been always gracious and uh, forward looking and they will uh, definitely finance them take all advantages of the banking facility provided by bank of india not other than also central bank can be doing union bank also our gupta sahab central bank say but the bank of india bank of india thank you very much yes. sir sir lastly i have no word to express my gratitude from behalf of the associations of the financial advisor and research in india sir for sparing your valuable time and uh, given a practical thoughts about the banking sector as semi sector how they can progress and uh, practically you touch the point sir sir i have no word to express for that thank you i am also thankful to see pramod sir i think uh, you are a very practical person sir i must say you have given practical thoughts to our enterprise people are also acknowledging what you are telling and you tell what bank of india is doing for a massive yes. for the sme sector sir and you are talking about the coal and you are talking about the e uh, what you are talking about i think uh, these are the major issue and the processing center you are taken for sme sector i think it will go way go a very long way i'm thankful to you sir for you are a very busy person i know that because you have i invited you so many time they can always some board meeting or something like that they uh, can now you spare your time i'm thankful to you sir i'm also thankful to although mr shah has to go somewhere uh, he is also very learned man and he written so many books and need of the sme sector and uh, i think uh, his presentation was very good and uh, all the participant must have appreciated i am also thankful to you him i am also thankful to my staff rohan and other his colleague the it team who has uh, given me full support to organize the webinar too much although we stretch for about 1 hour because it is up to 4 to 5 like we are touch our 6 i think this is a time first time i have completed for two more than 2 hours for that so i'm thankful to my field staff also and from resurgent side we are thankful to everybody thank you sir i am a participant to also thankful to them who always oblige us for that thank you sir aap, with this one aapko bhi aapko bhi shubh kamana aur aapko congratulations sir aapka aashirwad hamare sath hamesha raha hai pramod ji ka raha hai koi problem nahi hai sir pramod ji you are sachin tendulkar of webinar sir thank you sir kya keh rahe sir you are sachin you are sachin tendulkar of webinar sir <laughs> thank you sir thank you very much sir अब ड्यूटी लगा रखा है मेरा रिसर्जन ने भी करना है तो अब कर रहे हैं ना सर थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच ऑल द बेस्ट प्रमोद बाय सर बाय सर नमस्ते सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू